I don't know. We didn't notice as much of a difference when we got in. It was a little rainy, a little cloudy. Maybe it wasn't snow, but uh, um, very fortunate. Actually, I'm, I'm lucky enough to actually recruit down here, so I, I kind of had a little bit of an idea what to expect. And, um, you know, these guys do too. Obviously, Ryan's from down here, but uh, we're excited. You know, it's it, any time you get to get out of get out of your home, go down, have some, have some good time, relax a little bit. Um, you know, I think all these guys are excited about it. And for me, this is the first time I've ever been to the Orange Bowl. I think I've fortunate enough to be in maybe nine BCS games and uh, never been to the Orange Bowl. So uh, really, really exciting for, for me, for these guys, I think, and, and for all of our families. Great. We'll open up to questions. We've got two microphones. Uh, I'll start over here on the left in the front row. Yeah, Coach. Obviously, uh, Coach Meyer dropped the news yesterday that Noah's not with you guys at this point. Um, is there anything more you can add to that? Is there any hope in your mind <laughs> that he could still get down here and play in this game? Well, there's always hope. Um, you know, obviously he's dealing with some with some things, and you know, it's it's one of those things that we got to continue to move on. These guys know that, and you know, kind of had some of those situations. And you know, CJ's been around here a long time, so he's he's been through a lot of these situations where something happens and a guy goes down or um, next man up. So uh, obviously we'd love Noah. Uh, we wish for the best. We hope we get a chance to get him back down here. But for right now, we got to we got to continue to move on. Stand the left, second row. Luke, obviously you guys didn't play the way you wanted to down the stretch. What have you done to fix the problem? Uh, just keep working. I mean, that's that's the best thing we know how to do. And uh, you know, there's there's no magic to all the things that we do. Um, you know, we get better at what it is we do. These guys every day get better. They they work well together. That's the biggest thing. I think, you know, there's not one pinpoint thing where you can say, hey, we have to do this. We have to do this. We have to do this. The reality is, um, we got to all work together. And that's why football is the the greatest team sport known to man. You know, people can point fingers and look at stats and say. You're this and this and you're this and this and the reality is there's 11 guys out there and they're all responsible to work together um, whether it's pass run doesn't matter so uh, the, the, the ability for us to continue to get better and work together I think is the biggest thing we got to do you, you've said repeatedly that you like you'd rather be criticized than praised um, given the way the defense has played uh, the criticism that you've come under I mean how do you deal with that we don't listen to start with you know and sometimes uh, you know, my kids are at an age where I don't have to worry about it as much because they don't. But uh, they're getting to that age where, where uh, they start to ask you questions. And you know, I got my own son that says, well, Dad, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do this. And he's only 11. But um, the reality is, is, is you can't let those things, can't let those things affect you. Um, like I said, you know, for us, and we talk about it all the time, in Columbus sometimes the, the hardest thing to, do, to handle is praise. Um, and then criticism is just one of those things that makes you kind of bear down and, and work a little bit harder and, and make sure you're trying to fix those things. But uh, if you let that stuff affect you and, and change your mentality and your, and your outlook on, on what you're trying to do, um, that's when it's getting the best of you. So, you know, whether we've had problems, uh, we address them, we continue to work to get better, and uh, we handle it on a day-to-day -day issue. Yeah, we're going to go on the inside aisle about seven rows back. Uh, Coach, when you look at Clemson on film, do they remind you of, of anybody that you've played? And you know, when you look at their athletes that they have on the offensive side of the ball, you know, what do you think uh, one key would be in stopping them? Well, I, I don't know that we've seen probably as many of the, the you know, I guess uh, outstanding receivers. I don't know that we've seen uh, a crew like that you know, throughout the entire season. Um, probably offensively, we, we see a bunch of that. You know, similar stuff to what they do maybe from our offense is probably the closest thing that we see. Now, um, maybe not with as much of the vertical game and, and some of the size of the wideouts, uh, but th that, that's going to be a, a challenge to us all. Um, but I think the, the tempo and those kinds of things, uh, the best picture we can get is probably from our own offense. Ryan, you're from this part of the world. Did you know about Sammy Watkins when you were in high school, or you know, did you guys ever cross paths? Uh, yeah, I know about him a little bit, but we, we really never crossed paths. Uh, uh, you know, being from this state, you always hear about some of the good players, and um, always heard about him from not being that far uh, in Fort Myers. So yeah, I heard about him a few times, but we really never met each other. On the front row over here on the right, CJ, can you also talk a little bit about Sammy and if there's anyone else like him that you faced this year? Uh, I don't think so. I think he's like one of the fastest, one of the fastest guys in college football. Um, Great athlete, uh, you know, play making ability is out of the roof. So uh, we'll have our hands full, you know, uh, containing them. But I think our coaching staff will do a good job uh, putting his positions to make plays. Now we'll go Tim all the way out on the left. Coach, when everyone knows what Taj Boyd can do, he, you know, the stats, the numbers, you know, he makes all the throws. Obviously, a two-dimensional kind of kid. When you look at him, when you have a month to get ready for someone like that, is do you deviate from how you would? 
I don't know, ordinarily prep for somebody of that nature when you, when you have a month? Or do you try to keep it as normal as possible, I guess, when you're putting together a plan for how to contain him? Well, the biggest, I think, deviation is just the time that you have. I don't know that you ever really go away from um, what it is that you do, you know, getting better at the things that you do. And, um, you know, I guess you have a lot more time to, to evaluate him and to watch him and to, to try to think of the things that, you know, you can do to, you know, to give yourself a better chance. But, but the reality is, you know, I mean, you know, you got to do what you do and you got to continue to get better at those kinds of things. Um, we know he's got all the ability to, to, you know, to make. I mean, we recruited him too, <laughs> you know. So we know exactly what who he is and what he is, and and have watched him. And sometimes you have that much time. Sometimes you start evaluating and trying to find too many things, um, and then putting your guys in the situations where you know you're trying to be perfect at what you, you know, at every little thing. When they do this, we got to do this. And the reality is, um, what it comes down to is, is is guys going out there and playing ball, playing fast, understanding what they're going to do. You know, they've got a month too, so I'm sure you're going to see a few new wrinkles and some different things, um, you know, so it's going to have to be that, that, uh, that ability, you know, in that tempo and in that pace for our guys to, to look up, to get a good picture of what's going on, and then to react and play, um, you know, but as far as what, what he can do, I think these guys got a pretty good idea. You know, we, we face a guy that, that's similar in, in Braxton Miller on a, on a daily basis, um, so we, we know the, the threats of both the arm and the legs. Now we'll go over here in the second row on the left. Uh, Coach, right here. Um, reports that Von Bell is going to be starting. Uh, can you a little elaborate a little bit more into the decision why that you guys might have gone with Bond? Um, yeah, I think Bond right now is, is listed as our nickel. Um, just just with some some injuries and some some issues that we're dealing with. That um, you know he's been there all year. Really, it just hasn't had an opportunity to play as much. And that's probably one of those things when you've got some time um, that you got a freshman guy that you can get in there and, and get more reps throughout those three weeks of of bull prep than. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of time before that guy continues to get more and more playing time for us. And I think this will probably be the, the first week that you'll see him get as much of playing time as, you know, as, as we like. Let's go all the way to the right on the outside aisle. Uh, Luke, as a follow-up to the question you were just asked, is an advantage at all for you guys in preparations because your offense is similar to what Clemson's offense is? Well, I, I think it, it is. I mean, it, it helps us. You know, there's some things we can do in practice that, um, you know, it's, it's really tough to manage tempo uh, of a lot of these offenses, and Clemson in particular. Um, but when your offense can go out there and give you that, maybe not the specific same plays, the same blocking schemes and things, but the ability for your guys to get a good feel and a good look at that tempo and those things that, that take you out of your rhythm, um, our offense can do that for us. And I think that's probably, hopefully, something that is really, really going to help us uh, as, as it comes to fr Friday. Front row all the way to the left. Luke, what is the uh, the status of Bradley uh, Roby? He's he full go, 100% ready to go for the game. Uh, no, he's still rehabbing right now, so we're not we're not sure exactly how he'll be, um, and we kind of take it day to day. There's a, a, provided he does play, there's a potential for a fun matchup, provided it works out with him and Sammy. And as a fan of football, is that something maybe you'd like to see a little bit? Those two guys kind of going head to head a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm sure that's what uh, you guys would love to see too. But, um, you know, it, be able to switch guys from sideline to sideline and, and match guys is really a difficult thing. You know, I mean, they're not just going to leave him on one side so that we can, you know, maybe stick Bradley Roby or whoever to match up. Um, and then in those tempo things, it's really difficult. But there's a lot of matchups that are going to be out there that are going to be really exciting to see. Um, that obviously would, would be one. Um, but whoever, whichever side he ends up on, you know, there's, there's going to be an interesting matchup. Three rows back on the inside aisle. Oh, with the situation with Noah, um, you say you know you've got to move forward and guys have to step up. In your mind, who are some of the guys you'd like to see uh, kind of if he is not able to play, kind of step up and take over that role? Well, there'll be two guys that <clears throat> probably have to help us right there, and uh, Jamal Marcus and and Steve Miller, and those are guys that you know probably haven't seen nearly as much action throughout the year, but have been guys that have practiced every single day, taking those reps, um, and and that's a part of the game. And uh, you know whether we like it or we don't like it. You know these guys all know it. That what that does is just puts a little bit more heat on on the guys that are your leaders to say, hey, come on, you know, let, let's, let's continue to move forward. And those guys are here for a reason. They're on scholarship for a reason, and it's time for them. You know, when one man goes down, sometimes it's a chance for, you know, you might you might find out a little bit more about some of those guys. So that's that's the that's the exciting thing for for those guys and for ourselves. Um, you know, it's an opportunity. Front row here on the left. Luke is Armani Reed still the guy if, if Bradley can't go. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Armani's been the guy that's, that's uh, probably played the most for us. And with Vaughn at nickel, is is Tyvis hurt or is Tyvis moving to the other safety spot? Tyvis has been playing the other safety spot. So we, we, we're fortunate enough when you got a guy like CJ. It's been here for what six, seven, how many years? 
<laughs> feels like it at times, but uh, you know, been here for five years that you can you can take some of those guys and put some more stuff on their shoulders and say, hey, we need you to play free, we need you to play strong, hey, we need you to drop down and play Mike linebacker on some situations or something. But when you got guys like that, oh, wait, we didn't tell you about that. How's going to happen today? <laughs> no swap on it, but anyway, we'll get to that. Um, when you got guys like that, that 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 you put some heat on and you put some pressure on because they've been there, you know, that's a, that's a part of the game. Next question. Go right here in the second row on the left. Has the Roby injury been more serious than you thought? Has it involved surgery or anything like that? I don't know. You'd have to ask the doctors. I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of injuries that are that you know, it's, it's not an exact science. So, um, at one point in time in my life, I thought about going that route, and maybe I'd have a better be able to help you out a little bit better. But, but I bailed on that after about. Uh, after four years of college and said, I'm not going to go that medical route. Uh, so I can't speak real intelligently on exactly what's going to happen and what he needs. But, uh, you know, I, I always tell those guys, a mind is a powerful thing. And you know, a doctor can tell you one thing or a trainer can tell you one thing. And, and what's in your mind and, and how well you can heal and what you can do is, is probably as powerful as anything. So we don't really know. The idea, though, that you could be without Noah Spence, maybe your best pass rusher, without Bradley Roby against this offense, how daunting is that? It's tough, but you know that's why you got these other guys, you know, and, and that's that's a part of the game that that sometimes it uh, you don't always account for, um, but it's a reality. And you know, in the NFL, you can go and get John Kitten at 41 years old off of waivers and get him out of the get him out of uh, teaching with junior high or high school math and, and pull him onto your team. For us, we can't. We gotta we gotta develop that that freshman kid like Von Bell that's got to go in there and play. We gotta put more weight on a guy like C.J. Barnett. And Ryan Shazier and, and and you know Jamal Marcus and say hey if if the guy can't go we got to step up you know it's it's a part of the game we gotta we gotta deal with it and you know we can't dwell on it we can't whine and complain about it you know next man up on the left hand side in the middle of the and, and this message could be for for any or all three of you uh, Taj and Sammy get all the attention with Clemson but when you look at them on film are are there any other players that kind of stand out to you and you say, you know, yeah, you got to watch this guy and this guy and, and this guy on down the line? I mean, I'll let him say it, but obviously, like I said, I, I don't know that we've seen a receiver core um, as a whole the entire year like this. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Uh, their whole receiving core, you know, our, our threats, uh, they have another guy that plays, uh, I think, number one. He's a uh, really a good deep threat. Um, the running back's pretty shifty. Uh, probably uh, one of the shiftier okay. running backs that we've seen. Um, and, you know, they I mean, they, they have a, a cast of talented guys. Yeah, I feel the same way. I was just about to say uh, their running back's a pretty shifty guy, and, and they have a really good combo of receivers that can uh, do multiple things. So, yeah, I, I feel like it's going to be a, a one of the better uh, groups that we're going to face this year. The combination of size and speed is something that, that is really intriguing. You know, of, of their entire, you know, probably receiver core, really offensive skill positions in general. You know, the speed of Taj, all those things is, is what stands out to you. You know, and, and uh, you know, whether we've seen one like it all year or not, um, the reality is that six five is six five, and four whatever, four 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 three whatever it is, is is, is fast. And uh, you know, the ability to manage those things is is a part of the game. 